Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of A Cup of CX, Brewing Insights with CX Global Leaders, powered by ClueTrack. My name is Manuel and I'm your host today. I work as a Chief Growth Officer at ClueTrack. ClueTrack is a customer experience analytics platform that helps brands to understand the why behind customer experience. And with me today is yet another interesting uh, CX leader. He doesn't need any introduction, but in, in the spirit of uh, in welcoming, we have uh, Para Niaz, who is a well-renowned CX thought leader, CX practitioner, top 100 uh, CX thought leader as well. And he's also a keynote speaker uh, and a motivational speaker as well. Welcome to the show, Farhan Niaz. It's really a pleasure to have you today. Thank you very much. Uh, such a pleasure. Uh, Benul, thank you for inviting me. Uh, good luck to your podcast. I heard the first one. It was amazing. I'm, I'm honored to be part of the second one. A cup of CX it sounds pretty good. So we will enjoy, we'll enjoy the CX today. Amazing. Thank you, Farhan. It's, it's lovely to have you here today. And we're going to kick start this podcast with a very simple question. Uh, while I know I briefly introduced about you, it'll be interesting to hear it from yourself. If you can give a quick introduction about yourself, and also share your journey as a global recognized CX professional. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my journey started uh, about good 20, 25 years ago, and I'm very privileged that I've been in customer experience field for that longer time. Um, I started with Citibank, so I was 11 years with Citibank, I worked in multiple parts of the world. My last assignment with Citi was with Citibank Russia, I was the head of customer experience for Citibank Russia. Then I moved to UE, uh, I was part of the head of uh, customer experience for uh, Mashik Bank and then uh, director of customer experience for Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank for a good 11 years. Uh, that's my journey. I've been with the financial industries, but I've also been with the uh, the hospitality industries, you know, on and off as well. Um, as you said, uh, we're listed amongst the top 100 global thought leaders of the world. Uh, I'm also uh, awarded by Award International as one of the most experienced judge in the world. I think I have done more than 30 to 35 global judging uh, assignments all over the world. So that has been great experience for me. Uh, I'm also very proud that I'm uh, one of the co-authors of the two of the best-selling uh, books on Amazon on customer experience. It's called CX4 and CX5. Uh, this is CX4 in my, in my hand, uh, 18 of the top global CX thought leaders here. Uh, and CX5 is on, on its way. I've already ordered it. And inshallah, I'll give you one copy signed <laughs> as well. Uh, I'm also uh, certified, CX certified from the Disney Institute, um, keynote speaker all over the world. And uh, another feather in my, I, I, I'm quite proud of uh, uh, my one of my podcasts on another channel, which is called CX Goalkeeper from my one good friend, Gregorio. Uh, I was for seven months. My podcast was the highest seen and most downloaded podcast podcasts uh, uh, globally. Uh, on a personal note, uh, I'm an award-winning photographer as well, and that's my passion. And you can see a lot of Lego behind me, so I'm pretty crazy about Lego. So that's a quick introduction about myself. Amazing, amazing. Thank you very much for that quick introduction, Farhan. It's such an amazing, uh, awesome journey that you've had across this last 25 years. Uh, great laurels, and apart from work experience, you've been, uh, you know, pr primarily involved in a lot of uh, enriching CX activities, uh, mentoring CX leaders, so on and so forth. It's such a pleasure to have you today with us and have this beautiful conversation. Now, my my first question to you today is: What exactly is customer experience, and why it is considered so crucial for every organization in today's business landscape? Uh, I, I know this is a very simple question and probably a very most asked one. I'm, I'm, people are aware of the definitions. I'm not going to go into definition, but let's quickly look at why it is so important. Without realizing, I think you would know, you know, CX is part of our world. Customer experience is part of our of us, of our DNA. Without knowing it, without being conscious about it, on daily basis, we are experiencing service. I mean, if you're flying, if you're going to a restaurant, if you're meeting your friend, you're sitting somewhere, you go to a park, you uh, you know use some service, you go to a, a public or a private um, institute to do some activity, everything is an experience. And when we come back and when we reflect back and say, how do I feel? And if you say, oh, I had a great day and whatever I went, it went very well, very smoothly, 
that's a great customer. That's that's an experience. And at the same time, your emotions sometimes are. I had such a bad experience. You know, I went there. I had to wait in the line for so long. People were not polite with me, and I ended up not doing what I wanted. So we do experience all over the world. Even if I'm going and buying buying some clothes somewhere, shopping somewhere, how these people treat with me, how am I entertained? How am I? dealt with that's all experience so it's all around us it's not about the point that i'm making is it's not just the the organizations that need to be but the point is that every individual is going through an experience on day to day basis yes from a organizational perspective why customer experience is so important because it directly impacts the customer satisfaction it creates the loyalty it obviously impacts your revenues directly and obviously your brand reputation is dependent on it and if it, you have a good customer experience it gives you that uh, edge one of the questions that is always asked why customer experience is so important and i i quote a few uh, you know some some facts here uh, there was a very interesting study which was done a while ago and i've been quoting this study sometimes that when you go to an organization and you ask them what do you think how customer centric are you and you would be very surprised that more than 90% of those people that you ask in companies they feel that they are extremely customer centric and and i think they're delivering an amazing customer experience now the interesting part of the study is that when they went to the customers of the same organizations and asked them what do you think how customer centric is your organization so you would not believe that only 10% of the customers actually say that we're happy with our customers so the point i'm making is that at the same time we're talking about the importance of customer experience but look at the 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 variance look at how far away we are from from the reality organizations think they're doing a great job but when you go to the customers they think that there is a lot of room for improvement we know how bad customer experience you know can move these pe- people away 46% of the customers just walk away from a brand if if the if the person is not knowledgeable um i think just one bad instance you know about 17 to 20% of the customers would just move away from an organization if your experience is is just one bad experience i've had that um i remember one of my friend and me we go to this one particular restaurant and we always order a particular food and that day the quality of that food was not up to the standard so we called the manager and say you know the kind of uh, the taste of the coffee is very different and the manager said yes you're absolutely right uh, we 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 changed the Uh, the vendor and there is a different one and uh, uh, by the time when we were talking about this whole conversation the coffee he was holding the coffee and and that mug got cold uh, and and he just gave it back to us and he say you know sorry uh, uh, that's the way it is we have a new one you know we decided not to come back to that place again because the way we were treated that person had such an amazing opportunity to do a service recovery probably could have offered us something else could have offered another cup of coffee because this one was already cold uh, but they did not so we moved away from some place where we used to be uh, there for so long now um oh, let me give you a couple of example i'm sorry i'm going to take a little bit of time on this because this this is critical Uh, because for the listeners and i must thank all the people who have joined in from i'm sure from different parts of the world uh, maybe there is somewhere it's it's morning time and the evening time so you know uh, welcome to all of those as well uh, now a uh, couple of things which is important from a customer experience perspective when i said it's a differentiation if you look at the apple stores if i give you an example you go to the apple stores the way they're designed the way they're welcoming you feel that it's a very different experience you walk into the web Uh, the apple stores now also customer satisfaction and loyalty is important because providing a great experience is all about customer ex- experience and loyalty uh, when it comes to that uh, the, the organization that comes to my mind is amazon now amazon provides you an amazing fast delivery hassle free returns i am so happy with that whenever i ordered something and if i if i don't like something i just write to them that i i'm not happy with this without any question asked next day a guy comes and picks it up and would you not believe uh, manuel that there was a time when i actually opened the boxes because obviously i need to see the product yeah. i opened the box and when i call them they did not even say oh you've opened the box you've broken the seal sorry we're not going to take it back no no question asked product taken you want a refund or you want a replacement simple that's how experience goes uh, at the same time a couple of other things that customer experience does 
it is increasing your revenue. Now, these days, um, happy customers are spending more. We know that. You, you create repeat customers. Uh, places like uh, uh, Emirates, Etihad. I'm, I'm part of uh, uh, the Emirates group as well. I'm, I'm part of the uh, IHG, which is the uh, Intercom group with Marriott, Marriott as well. Cafe Nero, all these cafes. They have these personalized reward programs and apps. They are so convenient that now customer can earn miles and uh, and go. Uh, for example, my friend, one of my friends, she loves going to these places. The moment she gets a coffee, she says, oh, please stop it. So because every five steps give you a free. Yeah. free. That's an experience that brings you, you back to to those places. So these are all the things that customer experience bring, brings into it. Um, uh, a lot of other stuff that we will talk about as we as we go on. Um, one point that I just want to make from customer experience, people always use the word customer experience. I've started using the word human experience. Mm. And I want to make this point quite clear. And for me, the human experience is a mix of the customer experience, the part that the customer experiences, do not forget the employee experience. Absolutely. Employee experience. Then you have another experience, which is the most talked out today, which is the digital experience. Right. Then you have a process experience. Right. It's different from, you know, these things. And last of all, many organizations ever since I, you know, I've, I've recently joined as director of customer experience for a fintech company in Saudi Arabia. It's a B2B company. And it's a it's an amazing experience for me because I'm I'm experiencing the B2B world here as well. Is the partner experience. Right. For me, human experience would be a combination of customer experience plus employee experience plus digital experience, process experience, and partner experience. Absolutely. This is this is amazing, uh, Farhan. Thank you for making uh, you know uh, such a brief example, but it profound. Uh, uh, you know, uh, abbreviation or explanation of customer experience. And I think what you said is right. Um, you know, uh, experience starts from individual perspective, uh, personal experience, and then follows up with professional experience or company experience or corporate experience. It's such amazing, um, you know, uh, experience to have you. And also, um, you know, you, you spoke about Amazon, right? I had the same example last week myself where we ordered something uh, and that was not fitting in and that was not, uh, you know, uh, returnable. But however, when I spoke to the Amazon team, they just said, it's okay, sir, you just throw it away. If it's not working, we will refund you. That's an amazing experience, right? So I think uh, you will never look for another, you know, e-commerce partner or, a, you know, marketplace to buy anything else when you have such great lasting impressions. Uh, also, interesting. Add, very quickly, add one thing that, that you've said here. Uh, vice versa to this, there's another example. I'm sure all of us experience this. When you go and buy, uh, let's suppose you bought a shirt or something and they give you a receipt. There is a seven-day return policy. Do you do you know that every time you go in return, they ask you for that receipt? Yes. And I say, I don't have that piece of paper. You have my, I took it from my credit card or I yeah. paid my, you have it in your system. I paid it. The date is there. But they want yeah. that receipt. If you somehow lose that receipt, they will not return that. So, you know, that's that's the opposite side of, of how Absolutely. some organizations are so centric to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, you brought about a very interesting point uh, while you answered the uh, customer experience. Many companies claim that they are customer obsessed. They want to provide delight to their customers. They claim that they prioritize customer centricity. Yet often they fall short in practicing this. What do you think is the underlying reason for this? And parallelly, what are the steps that you know organization can, organizations can genuinely take to become customer centric in today's uh, life and you know walk of life? I think it's a it's a great question. I uh, very very related to what we're talking about. First of all, let me uh, on a on a lighter note say every organization claims they're customer centric, but the ones who are really truly customer centric are the ones who understand the essence of it. And for this, I think it's not wrong if I can quickly just quickly define what customer centricity means. I mean, customer centricity for me, this is an approach. This is an approach which uh, uh, prioritizes the needs and preferences of a customer in order to satisfy the customer. And it's in the core of the business activities. Now, what does that mean? It means that 
uh, are involving and putting the customer at the center of all the decisions. So, uh, you know, you, you, you talked about Amazon as well. Do you know that there is an empty chair concept? So every time they have a meeting, there is an empty chair. And they, they consider that chair, they presume that there is a customer sitting over there. So all the decisions that they take, they make sure that this chair and the customer sitting over there approves it or not. And if they feel that, that that chair has not, the customer sitting on that chair, imaginary customer has not approved it, they go back to the drawing board. That's what is the core of the essence of it. So you're constantly striving to uh, exceed the expectations of the customer. Um, I know we're constantly quoting uh, Amazon, but you know there is a reason why we do that. And it's a very simple vision of, uh, as, as of uh, uh, Amazon. Jeff Bezos in his vision has very clearly said that the, to- the, the most important single uh, uh, f- uh, thing to focus is the customer and our goal on the is to be the most customer centric company on earth simple that's it our goal is to be the most customer centric company on the world on earth and that's why we're talking about it there are many examples of the other organizations uh, if i may simply try to explain a couple of things for example a non customer centric organization would say uh, for example how much more can i do for a customer whereas a customer centric organization would say, how much more can I, uh, you know, can I benefit, my customers can benefit from it, not what I can provide them, but what my customers can get from from me. Uh, An organization is saying, how many more products can I do uh, for my for my customers? Another organization saying, uh, how many more products that my customer want from me? It's a very relationship based. The other one is transaction based. A customer focused is a very relationship based company. Uh, I remember, uh, Manuel, I'm sure you remember this Hanes ketchup, this bottle, you know, this glass bottle. And it's very difficult to get the, the ketchup out of, out of it. Yes. And just because of the customer feedback and customer centricity, now if you look at the new bottles of, uh, of Hanes ketchup, it's an upside down plastic bottle and you just squeeze. Absolutely. Instead of just jerking and just throwing it to catch ketchup all over the place, it's a yeah. simple squeeze out. That is customer centricity, where the customer becomes part of your your DNA, and you start thinking, uh, "What's uh, how important is what is going wrong?" Um, um, question that you asked me: Why customers are not centric? I think one of the main reason is that very internal focused. It today surprises me that many customers prioritize the internal processes, their systems, their profitability over the customer needs and satisfaction. This leads to short-term gains. I mean, they're looking for short-term gains and these gains are very, uh, the relationships are also not very conducive. So that's that internal focus is there. Um, Lack of customer understanding, because if you don't understand your customer, if you fully don't fully understand what the customer wants, how can you empathize with them? How can you create your products if you don't understand the pain points of the customer and their preferences. Uh, uh, So uh, many organizations today really don't understand the different uh, aspects and levels or segments of their of their customers. Similarly, uh, a no brainer, a no brainer is the silos. Too many silos. I mean, I've been I've I witnessed this as a consultant for some time ago. I, I used to do some consultancy as well. And I was shocked. I walked into many big organizations where I saw these these silos. I mean, people organize uh, units did not understand what their role was in customer ex- customer experience. There's a very interesting example from Coca-Cola. Do you know what the management of Coca-Cola does? They would just one day walk into any part of the organization. For, for example, there is a guy who's just uh, packing the bottles. Hmm. You would stop him and say, what is your, your role in customer experience? And if the guy says, no, I have nothing to do with customer. I've never met a customer in my life. I'm just packing. They would go back and say the organization has failed. Yeah. If that person does not understand his role with the customer. So this, the centricity is as simple as that, that when you understand the, every person understand what their role is. If this packing is not done properly, there is a damage over there that directly impacts the customer. If the bottles are, for example, uh, there, there's some stain over there or, or anything is damaged or the number is not complete, there is a direct impact on customer experience. And that is the role of the organization to explain it to everybody what centricity is. 
and all the decisions are are designed uh, according according to that. Um, uh, uh, many many examples I can give you. Ritz Carlton, for example, Ritz Carlton is very known for customer centricity. Their employees are extremely empowered, and yeah. they really go beyond uh, above and beyond to delight the customer. That's the reason why Ritz Carlton is called the uh, North Star of customer experience. We all know they have a certain pool of money which is going, given to every employee all over the world. Sixty thousand employees, all of them, they have access to thousand dollars every month which they can just spend on the customer with no questions asked that's the power of of centricity and believing in your people and what it can do to your uh, to your to the organization and, and in return to the customer experience thank you so much faran that was such a profound uh, you know um, explanation to what customer centricity means uh, moving ahead, you've been in the business for the. I know, I'm, I'm sorry, you're, you're going to ask this. some questions, some uh, um, examples pop into my my. Uh, so I will share because it's Central City. I had the privilege of going to Zappos. To me, Zappos yeah. is probably one of the best organizations in the world when it comes to customer centricity. And I'm, as I said, I'm certified from the Disney as well. And I I wanted to ask Zappos why you guys are so good. And the examples they gave me was unbelievable. Do you know that they have a 365-day no question asked free return policy? Yeah. And I have given this example in a couple of my other podcasts as well, but for the benefit of other people, why they're so customer-centric. A customer called Zappos and they wanted to order something online. The agent checked and saw that the product is not available. Now, what is good customer experience? You just tell the customer, thank you very much, sir. Um, it's not available right now. Please, a regular organization would say, please call us back. A good organization would say, I have your number. Whenever this product is available, I'll call you back. Yeah. That to me would be an amazing. Do you know what they did? Which you cannot believe. The, per the agent said, please hold on. I'll be back with you in one minute. He opened the directory, started yeah. calling all the organization that has that pro product. Yeah. Found an organization who has that product and say, I'm connecting you to my customer who wants something that I don't have, but you have. Wonderful. Yeah. The customer was shocked. The customer yeah. said, unbelievable. Who does that? But yeah. Would you believe that that person became the most? He said, listen, my responsibility is to satisfy you. That's what I've been taught. And that's, and that's how you create loyal customers. Absolutely. I think these are one of thousands or one of many million experience right and, and and i wish that a lot of cx leaders listen to this podcast a lot of them take cues from here and start building those uh, you know customer experience to the next level uh, you know you've been in the business for the last 25 years you know you've seen the b2c world you've seen the b2b world uh, you know you've been part of many such you know conclaves and conferences you've met thousands and thousands of you know cx leaders right and CX is, while has been there for many, many years, I think it's still evolving. It's still, still it's in, you know, you know, initial stages, if, if I may say that, right? Because the, the expectation of every customer, every consumer, user is increasing day by day. Now, that being said, what are some of the primary challenges that CX leaders encounter today in business environment? You know, what are the strategies do you think or approaches can, you know, these leaders adopt to effectively overcome these challenges? Uh, it'll be great to hear your perspective. I think this is a very good question. And being on, on either side, and obviously, as you said, not only have I my, my, myself, I have a lot of experience in this, but hearing other, others, others and being part of many uh, similar uh, podcasts and discussions all over the world, uh, it opens up your mind and you realize that, yes, it's it's such a challenging position. I think it's not a very easy job. It's quite a challenging job, but you would be very surprised that over a period of time, in the last four or five years, I've been hearing a couple of those things where still the uh, the leaders are seeking the answers. I'll, I'll try to answer this in two ways. One, what are the challenges they're facing and what are the limitations these Leaders also have today that probably if they would overcome those limitations, it would help them better in their uh, in, in their job. Uh, First of all, think, uh, Manuel, you would be very surprised that you said going to different uh, discussions and podcasts. And uh, uh, I, the word ROI, I hear it a lot. That mm. CX leaders struggle 
to explain the importance of ROI, CX ROI. Yeah. And and this question goes on, how do I explain it? Because I always say that organizations at the top need to understand, and this is the role of the leader to explain to them, that customer experience does not bring green dollars. Customer experience brings blue dollars. Mm -hmm. A green dollar is when you go for a sale, you sell something, and you get the money. It's a direct yeah. revenue. But customer experience is promising blue dollars, which are not going to come immediately, but in a course of time. Absolutely. It's creating loyalty. It's creating customer satisfaction. So, for example, if I go to my finance department and I say, I want to invest in a, let's say, um, journey mapping framework. And I want to buy one of the journey mapping tools. You yeah. say, well, what, is the, what is the return? And I would say, oh, after I'll do the journey, I will look at the processes. The process will be better. I will save time of the customer. It will be seamless. But at the same time, it is my responsibility as the leader to explain to him what is the cost save. Yeah. If you don't do it, what is the FOMO, fear of missing out? And Absolutely. what is the benefit? So if we do not explain to the people who are asking the money or the, the resources from what is the benefit? Yes, my if my, and there are many ways of doing it. Everybody knows that if you improve the NPS by let's say one or 2%, it results into a revenue of more than a million. There are theories, theories around it that can be explained. When you move a certain number of people from detractors to promoters, it, it means that those people who were not spending that amount of money is now going to spend, and it's very easy to calculate. You look at your existing promoters, find out what their current profitability is, and just remove. So th those are the complex ones. Then there are simple ones. For example, I used to go with simpler ones as well. Uh, you know that because of this process improvement, let's suppose if you reduce your call, let, let's say if you reduce your call volume by a certain percentage. Mm. Now, if you go to the finance people person and ask him how much does one call cost the organization, he would probably tell you five dollars. Yep. If you reduce the call volume, let's say by 5%, which means, I mean, I'm just taking hypothetical numbers. Let's say if you reduce 10,000 calls. Yep. Just multiply this by, by, by this five. You're $50,000. Yeah. You've saved by just reducing yourself, by improving the process. Why is customer calling? Just look at your top 10 type of calls, pick up the reason, move the customer to digital channel or give them another option or maybe let the customer do the product, the uh, activity themselves rather than somebody helping them create that opportunity. And we've done those kind of things. So uh, uh, first of all, ROI, this is, this is important. Secondly, well, this is my uh, point of view and some people can agree or disagree with that. Today, unfortunately, what I've observed with many of them most of the uh, leaders are running after frameworks. Yeah. What does that mean? This is a serious one. I am amazing because I've done multiple certifications from C CX. I know all the frameworks. I can create a beautiful presentation for the CEO, for the management, for the board of directors. And they clap because it's amazing. But there is a serious disconnect of that framework being translated to the front end who's actually going to deliver the experience. I was called by one of the very uh, international banks here in UAE and they asked me to you know, look at their, and, I, and they very proudly showed me their thesis of, of those frameworks. And I said, can I go to your front end and ask them how many of them have seen this? How many of them they really understand it? And, and what have you, which part of this has actually resulted in customer experience strategy? And that's not the case because you're looking for your job and you're very happy if your bosses are happy with you. So my humble request from everyone, when I was there, and I'm very proud uh, of one thing, I took one of the banks in UAE from 23rd to number one bank in customer experience. That is, you know, pinnacle of my career. And I'm, I'm mashallah, I'm, I'm very proud of that, uh, with my along with my team and everything. And what the only simple reason, we knew what the front end wanted. Those are the people who delivered and we empowered. We focused on the employees, we focused on, on that. So that's important thing. And today, our, our leaders, two more things that I will add. I know maybe the time is short, but I will add two more important things into it. One, please, NPS is not the only indicator. 
Now is the war of NPS. Voice of the customer is very important. Getting indicators are very important. But we need to understand that NPS is only one indicator. It is not the entire. So for me, my bouquet of metrics would be a mix of at least three or four indicators. And we need to know how to use it. For example, NPS is a loyalty indicator. It's not a satisfaction indicator. But today we are using NPS for satisfaction purposes as well. So for example, if I if a customer joins me initially and buys my product, am I going to send them an NPS? No, I'm going to send them a customer effort score. Yeah. How easy or difficult was it to do this transaction or to do the business with us or get on board? So customer effort score along with this. Now, if you go to a, let's say a branch or you meet somebody in a store, that's where the survey needs to come in as how happy or unhappy with the service provided. That's a satisfaction indicator. So if your leaders today are not looking at multiple indicators and there are further many more, I mean, I can, I can, I have separate uh, talks on this one, but you need to understand. And also one very important thing, which is, which many leaders today are making a mistake. NPS were never designed as an employee uh, evaluation tool. Mm. Even if you hear Frank Reichelt, who's, who's the author of uh, NPS, he's very upset about this thing. He said, I never designed this tool for evaluation of the employee uh, performance. And, right. and there's such a negative impact, Manuel. Do you know that how yesterday I called one of the telecom companies here. I'm, I'm not going to take names. I called the telecom company and I, after the call, would you believe I heard, they said, thank you very much, sir. Now we are transferring you to uh, to the system. Please leave a comment. Could you please kindly press eight or nine? <laughs> and I closed the phone. I closed the phone. I was like, okay. I closed. Then I realized, oh my God, what happened? Yeah. Would you believe I called again after a few hours? I was connected yeah. with another agent. I was again told when you are you sending you to the call center, uh, to the survey, please press yeah. eight or nine. Now you and I understand, and many of us understand what eight or nine means. But yeah. they could, they could customer, thousands of people calling every day don't understand that. Yeah. They know that they're forcing them. Um, when I, you and you go to the restaurant, so many times people come to you and say, "Sir, my name is this. Please could you you know go somewhere? Please put my name there and." write a nice comment, but you've not served me yet. I've not had my experience, but this guy is more concerned about how. So there are so many things which are, you know, we can talk about and the leaders need to be very, very uh, conscious about, about this, these kind of small facts. I can talk about other things as well, but you know, I think I'll leave you with a few years. Paran, you touched the Holy Grail. Uh, and I think it's very, very uh, enriching. And I'm sure a lot of, uh, listeners here, this would be a revelation. Uh, NP is not the only metric that you should take, right? This is one of the metric. And a lot of strategic decisions are taken uh, by looking at NPS scores, which I also tell in most in most of it's my conversations. I'm all for it. I'm not against it, but it yeah. has to be a combination. Absolutely. It should be a combination because there are also other places that you should look out for what customers are talking about. Uh, you know, what are they, you know, giving feedbacks and suggestions uh, and and most importantly, giving you the right uh, revelations. So I think it's very, very important that we look at, you know, holistically instead of just narrowing down on only MPS and taking those strategic decisions. Uh, I know we are a little over time, but I wanted to, you know, pick this up in, you know, interesting point. You mentioned uh, about how you co-author two best-selling uh, CX books on Amazon. Uh, yeah. Namely, CX4 that you showcased, and you know uh, the CX5 which is coming up. Can you, you know, provide some insights into key chapters of this book? Or uh, key, yes. uh, uh, I'm very book excited. I'm very, I, I would urge everybody to uh, get a hold of this copy. It's not just me who's written this. It's about you know 18 of the top, 18, 20 of the top. Uh, some of them are really, really good. You you read all this, and there's so much information because it's about experiences. So the, in CX4, which was last year, uh, the first one, I my chapter was called um, a success story, taking a bank from number one to number 23, from 23rd to number one. Yeah. So I actually wrote down my experience in, in that. So it's written like a storybook. 
uh, you would you would enjoy the story and i have given certain reasons what were the top reasons why i was able to with my team taking a bank from such a low position to number 1 and we won marshall award won every possible award in the world so if you go through the chapter you it's it's designed in a manner if i if i remember it i'm talking about the strategy how the strategy uh, what strategy we adopted i have a lot of emphasis on the employee experience and how the employee is the biggest biggest asset of the organization and how important it is for us to listen to them to involve them to motivate them recognize them that, that kind of aspect i have touched upon uh, as i was talking about the voice of the customer so i have given an aspect of how a uh, voice of the customer played a such an important part in for in me understanding the customer what was going wrong and and fixing it and also one more thing i i may add here and i'm a big advocate of one of the feedback mechanism which is mystery shopping this is a dying art yeah mystery shopping is such a key please all those organizations who are not doing mystery shopping go back and start doing mystery shopping send your people you yourself do it i used to get do it myself i used to have my top management do it i used to have my even the ceo go to the call center and listen to the calls and understand what the customer is talking about go to the ground reality i used to sit as a customer in a branch and sit back and observe mystery shopping and i used to use an external agency for this purpose it gave me so much insight into what actually and then i'm talking about some controllable measures on that cx5 is slightly different uh, over a period of time since i had a lot of experience so i wanted to talk about some of the myths that the customer experience has so the chapter in my cx5 is called debunking customer experience myths and understanding their realities okay so if i quickly give you uh, one of them is i uh, surprisingly the first one is about uh, Uh, achieving a perfect nps score uh, does not mean that the customer is entirely satisfied absolutely so i'm talking about the other measures yeah and by the way a lot of people think that a, a, a loyal customer is a happy customer this is a myth a loyal customer necessarily is not a happy customer my daughter is a hardcore apple fan you know she will go for iphone no nothing else even if you know, we remember some of those versions had a lot of issues didn't care but but so but at the same time she was very unhappy so there are there was i i remember there was an instance when i took one of the nps uh, survey to my management and it had 100% score and they said why are you showing us 100% that's a great clap 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 i said no oh, i'm here because i want you to read it mm. the the customer wrote i am a loyal customer i've been banking with you for ages and my my generations are banking with you but i'm not i will always give you high score because you're my family but yeah. currently your service is going down i'm not happy and this is the reason why it's going down mm. give me full score so there are a couple of myths that i talked about for example i talked about uh, uh, you know the, the, the people think that there is a huge difference between b2b and b2c yeah customer experience for me i always say it's human experience everyone on that side is a human being either you're talking to a company you're talking to a human on the side of the company so it's a, it's an interesting read there are other myths as well which i probably will not talk about in detail but i would urge people to go and read that yeah that's for everyone for every one of us to place an order on amazon and you know buy it and read it ourselves but it's a, it's it's going to be uh, uh, an experience by itself i can uh, i can actually see that <laughs> So so last question I cannot end the podcast with, without asking this question there's so much of jazz about AI there's so much of you know uh, you know news and talks and people are talking about AI right i mean AI is a future and all of that right so so coming to you know, and, and you're talking interesting about human experience right uh, we need to find a clear balance between you know how AI can help in customer experience parallelly there should be human empathy human touch right Uh, to make it really seamless so what role do you foresee in technology such as ai and ar playing in shaping the future of customer experience given their current prominence in the cx landscape uh, for us i think these are very exciting times um first i will be i will i will talk in in terms of educating that ai not just ai but digital in any way either is augmented reality or uh, this reality or even metaverse 
which is now now taking shape uh, in many this this has been brought up so many new visions to not just the customer experience but the entire entire experience of all all kinds but we should be very very of that that not everything is is a cookie cutter for every every organization for example when it comes to augmented reality and and uh, um let's say uh, other such uh, technologies metaverse i feel that that's that's purely for the retail industry for example if i want to buy a car i can now in in my 3d world i can see it inside without even sitting in a car and see the features around it uh yeah uh, in in banking or financial industry the more emphasis is on let's suppose uh, some of these these features which is called let, let's say chatbot or ai driven things which are personalizing which personalize or hyper personalization is something that is is very effective but the point that i want to make is uh, no matter how much the technology is taking us into a drive technology is that is just a driver of sex it's not customer experience it is a support mechanism mm-hmm. organization must understand at no point of time that technology would replace a human being we are not replacing a human being we are supporting the human being so right. the organization need to be very clear that you look at the entire journey and identify where the technology needs to come in where mm-hmm. where the problem is and where the problem is and I, i'm sorry i'm talking about the problem instead of talking about the future today unfortunately and I'm, i always said that this is controversial statement from me and i i stand by it most of the organization if not all use technology as a cost save initiative not as a customer experience initiative let me put a chatbot or a, a, a whatsapp and, le- and release the call center agents that's why when you call center call call center many call center there is a huge queue absolutely and you can't get through yeah uh, there are some i would not even say that you try to call the call center it's impossible to go to an agent there is no yeah. way you can press any button to go to an agent because they have hidden it yeah because it's a cost they have yeah. spent a lot of money to get those uh, those uh, expensive tools they can't spend the same money on the other side so there is a high side to this you need to make sure i mean learn from the top organizations of the world even if you go to the msm website there is a chat there where you can immediately start chatting with an with an agent yeah that person is always available nothing can replace a smile nothing can replace empathy Absolutely. and by the way please i'm i'm for example i'm customer of multiple banks and other other so i don't call call centers unless i need reassurance on something unless i need to talk about something that my system does not provide me so very important we need to understand that these are the things one thing i also want organizations to to because i'm talking about the future not specific to technology a lot of organizations today are designing their products and services based on the concept of generation z generation y generation x these generations will keep on coming when the new yeah. generation comes are you going to discard everything you've done before and start designing something new that's why the new concept where where the globally the new talk is generation cx define a generation cx and if you want more information on this i can i can provide you you know i can provide my listeners Uh, more information on this and i'll leave you on the last note of one one thing and i'm a big fan of uh, 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 ron kaufman as well he's i really listen to his podcast and stuff and ron, ron kaufman said the future of customer experience is called care mm-hmm. the day we start caring the customer the way care we care about our families absolutely when you look at your kid you take care of them today but you look at their future you're designing their future you look at how i will do my my kid will get the education how i will you know save to give them a better life that's the way the day you start thinking about your customer in terms of the future you start caring about the customer and there's no way uh, there's no reason why one day uh, the customer experience world would move into a customer care <laughs> instead of customer <laughs> experience <laughs> absolutely thank you so much farhan i think this was such a meaningful conversation with you And, and, you know, absolutely really key takeaways for me and i'm sure this is 
going to be of immense uh, value for so many of our uh, listeners uh, today and you know maybe recorded version for others as well human experience will be at the helm i think we shouldn't uh, you know forget that humans have emotions and uh, you know we need to keep human experience at the best possible while there will be technology to help but the empathy the human touch has to be always there um so before we end the session there are a couple of questions for you uh, farhan and the first question is from apremia uh the question for you is how do we imbibe that customer centricity into each and every employee of an organization what drives them to change their narrative towards building experience which which will satisfy the customers sure. thank you very much great question it's a very important one and i think it's a very relevant one uh, i can give you a theoretical answer or i can give you a practical answer let me give you a practical answer the way is not easy by the way to change a culture is not easy first of all you must understand that the change comes from the top it just does not go from the bottom so change always comes from the top we need to ensure that our leaders start speaking the language of customer experience in everything that they talk about today in most of our meetings the word customer experience is not at the forefront you're talking profit you're talking revenue you're talking a loss uh, acquisitions how many customer we taken but customer experience need to be start and and that's why it's very very important now couple of things that i started doing with where you build a culture you start publishing story i'm a big advocate of storytelling so whenever your your a customer gives you a good feedback put it up write it as a story and make sure that everybody look, hears this yes so i used to write a great story a customer went had a great interaction this is what he did and then suddenly people start congratulating that so imagine if a teller sitting in a branch there there are thousand tellers and suddenly head of customer experience send it to copy to the ceo and all the top management and ceo replies to that mail and say farah thank you very much you did a great job that's how and others are reading it so it it builds celebrate success celebrate small things uh share stories so that is one way that you can do there are many other ways that you can enter the culture one way is also that cx uh, matrix or uh, it should be part of everyone's uh, goals so one aspect of customer experience need to be part of everyone's goal so they need to know that if if organization's top responsibility is to get an nps of let's say 50 what is my role and what do i do to get them to that that level i think this is very interesting and important for all of us to understand uh, and i think you touched upon this point when we talk about customer experience we shouldn't forget about the employee experience we shouldn't forget forget about the process experience this is holistically we should look at it right and we should uh, and i also firmly believe what you said farhan uh, any change that you want to do in an organization it starts from the top right it and it's not just only preaching but it's also about um, walking uh, what you preach right and it's very difficult one of the very important things i'm sorry i'm, I'm cutting one of the very important things that i did as, as the head of customer experience i would urge all of them i ran a service quality council i made mm-hmm. sure that every decision that we took in customer experience all the group heads were sitting there not only the group heads sat there i made sure that there was representation from every for example one teller is sitting there one branch manager is sitting there somebody from the call center is sitting there the people who are directly and we made sure that they understood the decisions that we were taking they became became our ambassadors absolutely. they go back and deliver the message to their absolutely so centricity is is a is an art and it it takes some time absolutely interesting uh, here's the second question from bumitra Uh, yeah. and i think this is in context with what we spoke a lot about amazon uh, yeah. the question is considering we are talking about amazon and how they value their customers over and above their loss they bear for each product returned or replaced do you think for a small organization barely close to breaking even such customer satisfaction would be become a luxury also what's your take on such a return slash replacement policy or any other policy which is difficult for a small firm to follow spoils customers making it difficult for other firms to work in the same market excellent question i think this is such a relevant question i'm sorry i'm going to spend it thank you very much mr kalyu to ask this question it's it's not the cost it's not the amount it's the thought 
Once again, I have ordered thousands of products from Amazon, all of us. How many have you returned? I remember one. Yeah. That's a risk that you take. Sometimes it's a message. When I said that Ritz Carlton gives a thousand dollars to every employee to spend every month, that's a huge amount of money. Anybody, it's the same relationship. There was a question. It was actually a question asked during one of the uh, uh, one of the master classes with Ian Goulding, and somebody asked asked him that. Listen, I'm a very small organization. I don't have the luxury of thousand dollars. Yeah, this it's not the amount. It's the concept. Do you know that they went back and inculcated it, and they gave seven dollars to everybody. Seven dollars, not thousand. Seven. Yeah. And I'll, I'm sorry. I'm going to take one one minute on this. This is very important. One day, a customer called this organization, and she said it was an old customer, and she said that I my my son is buying a car, and I'm planning to uh, you know take a loan for 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 some for this particular purpose. And during the conversation, the lady said that I'm old. I wish I'm I'm handicapped. I wish I could travel somewhere. That day, that agent left the office and went straight to a travel agency. And he said, do you have a brochure where you have specific deals for needy people? Yeah. They said, yes, we have a, a detailed uh, plan and we do specific travel. She took the brochure. What does it cost her? Zero. Yeah. Went to a, a, a hardware store and bought a car refresher. Refresher. Small mm. one. A tree yeah. made or something. What did it cost her? Probably less, less than a dollar. Yeah. Went to another shop and bought a card. Another few cents. Came yeah. back to the dear madam, here is a gift from me, a car freshener for your son's new car. Mm. And here is also enclosed the brochure. Yeah. For you to travel. Yeah. And yeah. the woman cried. It costed nothing. But it did the same purpose that Ritz Carlton person is doing when he has thousand dollar when he calls let's say Dubai uh, Opera and books yeah. a free ticket for for someone. So Absolutely. yes, cost is is not if your if in your mind cost is the driving factor. That's not customer centricity. Uh, Zappos, I gave you the example when somebody says I want let's say for example they call for they ask for a shoe. And it it uh, and the the first question Zappos would ask them what is your shoe size and they would say I'm not sure I think it's 41. Next day they, they receive three pairs, yeah, 40, 41, and 42. And then they ask them try whichever you you can and return the other two. Now this cost they bear it the return yeah. cost. Zappos does it first of all not everybody is doing it but because of this do you know that this customer doesn't go anywhere? Absolutely. That's the value. That's the value. When you spend a little bit of money, a little bit of time on some somebody, people, you do not, please, I always tell all my people, do not design everything, anything, in, especially in customer experience, thinking that somebody will misuse it. There will always be a certain percentage. But that percentage, when you count it, is very small. Because Absolutely. people see the benefit of the real thing rather than misusing that, that facility. Absolutely. I hope I'll be in it, sir. No, absolutely. This is this is amazing. And in fact, I had a very similar experience. I was working with a startup a couple of years back, and uh, typically the the corporate credit cards were given to people who travel the most, which is sales and the marketing team. But uh, this the head of finance took a call that uh, let's give the corporate credit card to everyone in the office. Um, and I I went up to him and I asked him, listen. Uh, you know, you're giving this to everyone. Uh, people may use, may not, may not use, but people may also misuse. What happens then? So he said, listen, uh, you know, what if they misuse? I mean, what percentage will, will it be? And obviously, these are my people. And if, even if they misuse, they're going to eat it for, you know, maybe go out with the family or eat with friends. This is for their, that is okay. So I think it is the intent. If you think people are going to misuse, they will misuse. And if you think they are not going to misuse, they are not going to misuse. And I've never heard uh, for, for four years that I stayed there, not even yes. one person misused it. It's all about that intent that you have when you build certain, you know, uh, experiences for your family or friends or company. It means a lot. Yeah. Last I would always say, I always say design for the best. Yes. And 
put controls for the worst. Absolutely. As simple as that. It works. One last question. Yeah. How this is from Rajesh Tangamani. He is asking, how do we reduce customer churn with better customer support systems and customer support metrics to be considered for better CX? Good, good question. I think churn is a very important indicator. First of all, and I, I am a big advocate. The churn, in the end, that's your. It's far more. Uh, Rajesh, thank you very much for this question. It's far more expensive to uh, get another person on board rather than holding on to your existing ones. Now, you know, if you want to reduce the churn, the most important thing you need to understand what are the reasons why people are churning, and who are they churning to? Are they churning to your competitor? Or are they churning because they're unhappy? Uh, the management needs to look at churn on a daily basis. It needs to be say how many customers. Uh, you need to have a strategy. What we did recently with my organization that we have created a retention unit. So every customer, which whichever place they come and they even they showed the small indicator or in, inclination that they were not happy or they want to leave, we immediately do a retention. Policy over there. Uh, unless and you un until you understand the top reasons why the customers are are churning, you would not be able to fix it. So first, most important thing is you need to go back to your database, take at least six month data, study the people who left you, and if you do not know why they left, then the most immediate thing you need to do is to in induct a exit interview. Put a uh, questionnaire there who whoever leaves you to make sure that you understand why they left. Sure. Also, not only the people who have left you, but the ones who show you the inclination of leaving, ask them why you want to leave. That would give you the insight. And once you have this, this, uh, uh, this information, based on that, you can work on those processes and find out why. why? Is it the price? Is it poor service? Is it maybe the features of the product that are not sufficient? Maybe technology is the reason why customers are leaving. Maybe uh, it's the competition which is giving better incentives to this, this particular customer. For example, a lot of people move from one card to another because of the features. So you need to, and, and then I see a lot of innovation happening. I was very surprised. I went to um, uh, Nando's. It's a very favorite place of mine, Nando's. And it's, I always thought it was a chicken place, but yesterday they said, oh, by the way, do you know that we are we are going, going into multiple other uh, meats uh, as well? And we are also vegan now. Wow. Okay. That's customer, that, because they're churning, they're losing their customer. Somebody comes and say, oh, I'm vegan and comes to them and say, sorry, you know, I, we don't have it. You understand your customer and you bring those elements elements into it yeah. and you make sure that your offer becomes better. It's a, it's a debate. It's a different discussion. Uh, I'd be very happy, Rajesh, uh, with the uh, time short, we can have this discussion separately as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Farhan. I think this was such an interesting conversation today with you and thanks for coming. We're, we're really happy. Uh, I got so much of insights from you today and I'm sure... Uh, the folks that were listening to this podcast would have also got immense value out of this session. Uh, we take real pleasure on behalf of ClueTrack and all the other people who are listening to us. A big, big thank you for spending an hour with us. Thank you for sharing so many, many examples, so many, many experiences and real time, real life experiences as well, which is very enriching, uh, Farad. Thank you so much. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much. Uh, awesome. Good evening to everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for everyone listening. Um, we'll come back to you with next episode with another interesting uh, CX leader. I'm sure you all enjoyed Farhan session. Um, and if you have anyone that you know is a CX leader that you want to nominate, or if you are a CX leader, you want to be part of this uh, show, please write to us at manual at cluetrack.com. And until then, signing off your host, Manuel. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. <laughs>